Adventure Series. Kayak Adventure Series. This is where you choose your own adventure. You want to be offshore. You want to be shallow. You want to go up the creek. You want to have a kayak that is sophisticated. Or a kayak that is simple. You get to choose your own adventure. Oh, looky there. That's a micro bag. I hope you brought the family. This is going to be wild. Hey, this adventure is going to be amazing. All right, we are live. We will wait a few minutes for some people to come in, but we have a show. Oh, my goodness. First of all, I mean, we'll introduce him properly. Um, and, and this is for later in the show, but Gene Jensen and oh, Jody yeah. Queen coming on. But but the mullet angler, I think if because I was watching some of his content and and he's from Georgia. And I think if Gene had started a YouTube channel back in the 80s, he would be the mullet angler. Like when I hear him talk and he's a kid having That's fun. True. In the tree, I'm like, that was Gene as a kid. So, <laughs> so we can, uh, yeah, we can get more into that later. Maybe or maybe not. But yeah, how you guys absolutely. doing? Good, Billy. Good. Welcome to the Lines In presented by Sunline, guys. You know, I'll tell you what, we should start. Here's what we should start doing. There's people starting rolling now, but but we should start just giving away, like, right when we go live, give away, like, the best juice, the best tip of all that you never give away in the middle of the show. And then it encourages people to, like, try to be right on 11 a.m. You know what I mean? Give away a little. Yeah. Little, all right. Here's the tip. Shoal bass the, like big baits. There you go. That's <laughs> it. Now, old, because of that tip, advice, gonna, by the way, yeah, <laughs> someone's going to win Shirley Palooza just because of that tip right there. They're going to say, you know what? I remember April 17th, Jake said Shoal Bass like big baits, and they just put on a huge glide, caught a six and a half, 21 and a quarter, and they won the tournament. So, <laughs> dude, it's all about that top loaded, uh, it's all dangerous. That's that's it. Story. Was it was at 10 killer? I mean, geez, third, it was not eight. at Possum Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah how was possum king the bass master you know it was it's sad to miss that um so far away it was, man and it was weird it was a weird tournament um they were not spawning and then they were spawning saturday and then it got canceled the day one got canceled it was still really windy sunday morning um which kind of like forced my hand to do some like what i would consider like gambling and i just kind of swung for the fences and um, I think I had four strikeouts instead of a home run. So <laughs> it was, um, I mean, I, I didn't want to like just get a limit. Like I really wanted to like really try to win. And I think that like kind of, you know, you, you go, when you go for broke, like you can literally just go broke. And that's kind of what happened with me. So, yeah. You know, did you see how Jason Isaacs won? He, he did the same thing. He gambled. He went somewhere totally new with his dad. Right. And what so he it was did, a good game plan you had. You got to gamble some time to, uh, yeah. you know, to, what, to go for the win. So what he did was very similar to what I did. Like I was at like a very similar spot than him. I just didn't yeah. have those, you know, I didn't get those fish. Cause I mean, he basically said like he caught all his fish in like 30 minutes and then it was just like, all right, I'm done. Yeah. And, and off, yeah. we have, I have another, uh, I have another podcast that I do in Ohio. Cause I'm stuck in Ohio. Most of the time I interviewed Jason yesterday on this strictly kayak fishing uh, podcast. I think I got the exclusive interview if I can get it out pretty fast, but yeah, two hours to go. He needed one fish and he ended up catching his one fish and then calling off of the same area, three fish, like 21, 21, right. 19. And yeah. It was a windy fish. tournament, man. Like it was and when I say windy, like it was dangerous, like Possum Kingdom gets some big rollers going yeah. and like coming back Friday, I was like, I didn't think I would be more nervous than what happened at Ten Keller, but somehow I was because it was like, because <laughs> I was in that new kayak and I know how the Sholey tolerances are. I've never really taken this in chop because I was in that new CK2 Venture and it comes over those waves a lot more aggressive than the Sholey. And I was like, oh man, I don't know. Is this <laughs> yeah. going to flip here? <laughs> Yeah, but it I did mean, great. It did great. Like that kayak is is it's a fast kayak. Man, is it fast? Yeah, the CK2. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Um, well, and to tie it into the kayak adventure series a little bit about what we're talking about, it was a one-day shootout for the Bassmaster Kayak series on Possum Kingdom. And you went somewhere, you gambled, didn't pay off. And what, what I think is cool about again, that's the elite level of elites. And Jason Isaac's a good angler. He didn't, you know, luck out that he got, you know, a one-day shootout win by any means. But having said that, at the Kayak Adventure Series events, 
if you are intermediate, you are a beginner, you are nervous about taking a gamble, going somewhere, and then paying for it, you on Friday with the four hour afternoon session on Friday, you can do that. And even if you zero and you whiff, you're okay because it's just five fish for the whole event for between Friday and Saturday, just five. So you can take those gambles. You can take the risks and still have a chance to win and not just be, obviously you're done at any two day tournament. You're done. If you don't get a limit on one day, or if you get a low limit, it's really hard to ever come back and win, but this will be kind of nice to see how those intermediate anglers who are trying to kind of learn about these tournaments and work their way up to the bass master and hopefully the KBFs that, that maybe they can kind of come in with a little bit more confidence and, and hope that, you know what, a five fish limit, a day and a half, even if I make a mistake, I can potentially compete with some of these other top names, which we're going to have two of for sure on the show here today with Jody and Gene, who are already in the green room. We'll bring them on in a second. You could potentially compete with these guys in that format because it, the more days you give, the better, it, the more it's going to kind of give the advantage to the, the, really the anglers that are the top of the top that are out there doing this full time. So we'll, we'll be interesting to see how this series does that. The only thing I want to do before uh, for our news and notes, if we can move on to the news and notes segment before we bring Jody and Gene in is I'm going to share my screen and go over to the kayak adventure series website and just be encouraged and remind you guys, let's see, uh, to sign up. We're two weeks away, a little bit uh, more than two weeks away. If you go over to the events, you click on Thomas and Georgia, you will see this is pretty cool. You scroll down, you know, you can either scroll down or just click on event details. I'll just click on that. And this is where you register. This is where all the information is, guys. It's nowhere else. It's right here. If anything changes, we put it in red. We keep it there for a year. So you just need to come back to this page. It never moves. Anything you ever need is all on this entire page. You scroll down, you'll see hourly itinerary is on this page, like where you're going to be, when you need to be where for every literal hour of this event. Um, you can register for things like the Bass U Brunch, which is pretty cool, um, and see all about the events. But the Peach State Kayak Anglers, they have their Tourney X page up now, so I've linked it. You click over there. It'll take you right to their joint event, so you can go over there, and they just got it up, so you can – enter that joint event. They should have a bunch of, sorry, I, I clicked on it, but I don't think it took you guys there, but um, they, sh but they should have a bunch of people in their events. They usually get a good, you know, 50, 60, 75, hundred anglers. So that should be a fun joint event. If you want to possibly earn a little bit more money, you're feeling confident. The other thing I want to say is if you click on the individual division, which it, ah, it's not taking you every time I click on it, it takes me to a new, new window. So, uh, but I will just share that window with you guys real quick. Cause I want to show you guys how many people are in the, uh, in the event so far. We've got a lot of, of folks in the event guys. We've got uh, 38 in the individual division. You can see a lot of names that you've heard of a lot of names we haven't heard of, which is great. Cause it's showing how this is growing, you know, kind of growing the sport to some folks that maybe normally wouldn't fish the event. So there's 38 already in. And if, if you know anything about kayak fishing, that's pretty darn good for being more than two weeks out. And then if you clicked on, um, you know, the, the team division, there's a few unique people there that aren't in this individual division. And then if you click on the micro bags thing, and if you click on the side pot Sunday, again, same thing. So we probably have 55, um, 55 total registrations and probably 45 unique people. So that's awesome. Go get signed up. Uh, don't wait, wait any longer because the first hundred anglers get a hundred dollar gift bag. So from the sponsor. So definitely kayak anglers are such procrastinators, man. Oh, we yeah. are. We I mean, are. it's funny, like the Bassmaster event had 60 people with two weeks ago and they topped out at 174. So yeah. I, we, we had a we had a local a local trail and on Friday there was 22 people signed up. It was a Sunday event. 49 anglers for a local yeah. trail. We went from yeah. 22 to 49 in two yeah. weeks. And and let me just throw this in. There's no reason not to sign up early for this because the refunds are all the way up to two days until the tournament. Now you will lose like 10 or $15 because of Stripe and Tourney XVs. We can't get back, but refunds, full refunds up to two days before, and you can move your entry to any other event down the kayak adventure series for no charge. If you decide not to do it, but if you do and you sign up now, the good news is you get that hundred dollar gift bag and you're, you're all set. So let's keep, let's keep it rolling guys. we got a lot of momentum. Let's keep sharing it. If you really care about the series and what we're trying to do with these big brands, like the GoPros and Toyotas and the real trees and, 
Torquitos and X2Bet, all the, the big brands in and out of the fishing industry. We can we can make this even, you know, an even, even bigger party because that's essentially what this is. It's a, hopefully the six biggest parties of the year. And we bring everyone together with all of our diverse styles and kayaks and just see, kind of battle it out and see what happens. And there will be certain events where, ah, man, I should have been, you know, out in the main lake scoping or there, you know, possibly or uh, certain events that oh, I should have been up in a backwater river and Creek. And that's kind of for everyone's to kind of figure out. And some events it'll be hopefully a mixed bag in the entire top 10 of people doing all different things. And so we're going to um, talk a little bit about all the different kayak rig rigs and setups with uh, Jody and Gene here. And um, unless yep. you've got something else, uh, Billy. Do. Yeah. Yeah. Just a couple of hit on couple before we bring things. in. Yep. yep. Before we bring them in. Um, one thing you guys will see uh, throughout the live streams mm. uh, now and going forward, we'll have a voicemail and just leave a voicemail. Uh, we'll play it live. Your thoughts, your question, your shenanigans can be played live. And so when you see that number come up, jot it down, put it in your phone, call us from the water, call us from work. We don't care. Just leave us a message. And then the other thing I have is Discord. You know, we understand that a lot of people don't, um, they're not on Facebook or wherever everyone gets all their information. So Discord is great. So we've created a Discord link that does not expire. So with technology now, you don't have to have this link. You don't have to type the link in like you you know had to 15 years ago. You can uh, take a photo, take a screenshot of this right here. And then from I know from iOS, probably the same on Android, you click on this link and it will open in Discord or take you to the website. And it, and it should say Kayak Adventure Series uh, link invitation. Click on that and join the fun on Discord. Yeah, it's a great, great community app tool, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I'll server. drop a link in chat here for everybody. Yeah, so you can do that too. So look at the easy way. Yeah, it's so yeah. much easier than Facebook groups, man. It really is to keep up with what's going on and, and everything. So the world's kind of switching there, and we're hopefully, you know, starting a trend here on the fishing world. That we can get there too. So uh, a quick question. Okay, Sam Cox, where can I find the details on the team division? Well, everything's on the website. So just like we said, go over there. Click on the website. I'll, uh, I'll I'll just do it real quick so you can you can see here. Um, click on the team division. Learn more. X2 team division presented by X2 Power. Learn more. Click on it, and you will learn about all the divisions. Actually, you can see it's a two person team that scored their best ten. You know their ten best fish, five from each angler. They do not. You guys do not have to fish together. The entry fee is one hundred and fifty dollars. $70, $75 per angler. So, hey, a very inexpensive way to get into the Kayak Adventure Series. Just find a teammate, enter the team division only, and you're only out 75 bucks. But, of course, you're welcome to enter the individual and team and all the rest of the, of the divisions. You can enter them all. You don't have to just choose one. You can enter all of them simultaneously. But team is a great way to, you know, have a have someone ride with you from whatever state you're from. You guys want to catch a shoal bass, come down to Shoaly Palooza you know, split the gas money, split the hotel or the campsite and uh, only spend $75 on the entry fee and hang out for the festivities, the festival. And of course, um, hopefully those ACA classes afterwards, which we should definitely mention that again too. But um, this it definitely allows people. Uh, yeah. I think I already covered that. Yep. So, and you don't have to fish together. You do not have to be together. You know, one part like Lance and Tim Perkins uh, who won the last river bass in, angler of the year title or not the last one, but several, I think Ken and Clayton won the last, the final one, but they had a strategy where they didn't fish together. They did not want to be together. But as we've talked about in previous episodes, being together on the water, we think could actually be an advantage if it's a bigger uh, body of water, like a lake or a river, because you're allowed to communicate with other anglers in the competition. And obviously other anglers probably aren't going to give you any good info, but your teammate might, and you're right there and say, Hey, here's how, here's what they're biting. Here's what they're, you know, here's how I'm catching them. And then next thing you know, yeah, you may have given a, a, a tip to somebody who's competing against you in the individual division also, but I think that it well makes up for it with how high you could climb, you know, in that team division. Of course, even if you helped your, your teammate and they jumped above you in the individual division, dude, they're only going up above you one spot that only affected one possible spot. And, many spots in the team division. So it's a cool concept. I think you guys will love it. It was hot, very popular with river bass and we would have some events. We'd have 30 or 40, 50 teams. I mean, literally it'd be like 125 people in the event and half of the, I mean, nearly half of them were in a team. So cool. All right. Well, um, let's bring these guys in. Ladies and gentlemen, this 
This is the main event. All right, everyone. We have two ambassadors to the sport. If you guys have been paying attention at all, two of the top kayak anglers, and not only do they both create content, they don't just give away the juice. They actually teach us, both of them. So let's bring in Gene Jensen, the Fluke Master, and Mr. Jody Queen. God, we are in presence of royalty here. Kayak Nation <laughs> royalty with these guys. Uh, Gene, what's up, what's man? Up, You're guys? on the water. You're on the water here, so I love it. Um, and hopefully Jody, is, is he black on your screen? I'm seeing nothing on my screen. He's loading in. He's loading in. All right, Jody's loading in from that West Virginia internet, and that's all good. Um, but Gene, we'll, we'll we'll talk to you for a second here. You're on the water, so you gotta you, the pressure is on. You know, we need a fish catch while, while we're on here live. We'll see. We got a thunderstorm moving in. There might they might turn on it. They're spawning right now, so it's like you got to be on top of them. So I'd rather have them out yeah. a little ways so I can do some some uh, chatter bait and cranking and that kind of stuff. But we'll see if I can get something. So. Yeah, man, absolutely. I think I think you can do it. We'll see. We'll we'll have you on here for whatever 20, 30 minutes and yep. maybe it'll happen. But uh you're you're a guy that's used to filming uh at, and, or fishing under pressure and with cameras and everything around you. So if anyone could do it, I've got confidence All in you. All the bloopers. You know. All the yeah. bloopers. The, the trick yeah. is to put a go, put a, a drone over top of me, then I'll catch a fish. Other than that, we'll just see. <laughs> you know, that's actually funny because in the kayak of, or in the uh, Hooked on Wild Water show that I used to do, whenever they would send the drone up, I felt a lot more freedom because they're not near me with the, with the boat there. And I yep. can just go do whatever I want. Not concerned about how fast I got to keep up with me. And I can go into some places. Maybe they couldn't really even get with the boat. So I would, when they would send that drone up, I'd go in the nastiest shoals and stuff. And, and I usually would end up catching one. You know, it's funny how right. that works out. Have you guys but, seen the drones that like follow, you know, that's like yep. the, the new technology. It's like these little drones, you throw them up and they yeah. just follow you the whole time. Yeah. The little ones have the big boy technology now. Yeah. Yeah, the affordable. That, that'll be the ones I get. Yeah. I don't trust myself flying those suckers. I need them to be as automatic as I can get them. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Same same here, you know. And I haven't tried those new little small ones that you see, but maybe, maybe they are good quality and they work great. I don't know. I mean – I don't know. Someone out there, someone in the comments can maybe tell us if those are, are, are any good. There, there, there used to be like a restriction on the weight of the. So when they first, you drive, when they started making those small ones, it was to get under the, it's kind of like the uh, boat thing. Yep, right. You don't have to the the Yeah. It's only 13 and a half. It's not yep. really a 14 footer. Um, they did that with drones. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't have a pilot license. <laughs> well, let's see if uh, Jody will get in here. Let's see if he's got signal here. There he is. Jody, you're with us now, bud. Yeah, my, my phone overheated, man. <laughs> oh, my Lord. That's not good. I'm, I'm out in the truck. Yeah, you're good. You're good, man. Well, I just want to hang out with you and uh, and Gene and get your thoughts and some opinions on the Kayak Adventure Series. It's, you know, it sounds like you guys are going to uh, be at some events. I know, Gene, you're doing a seminar on Friday as part of our Bass U brunch for the for the uh, Kayak Adventure Series over there at Shoal Palooza. So that'll be awesome. Uh, you guys yep. can learn how to rig up some kayaks from Gene. He's going to kind of go over a lot of rigging. And, man, uh, you know, I know your camera's faced on you right now, but if you turn that camera around, I, and I know you guys follow, <laughs> probably follow Gene on social media already. And you can see he's got many graphs, all the electronics, all the rigging. Yeah, he's going to he's gonna turn it for us. Oh, he'll just do this. Oh, man. So, there we go. Dude, so yeah, that is unreal. What, but in the seminar, what I want to talk about are the the little unknown or little known tricks to make life easy. Boy, that is blurry. Let me fix that lens. Okay. Um, but uh, to make life easier on the kayak, I've got bungee cords and Velcro and all kinds of stuff in hidden places that keep things out of the way. I have a lot of crap on this boat, but nothing gets in the way when I'm trying to land a big fish. And that's kind of I want I want to show people how you can be efficient, Dude. but I also want to show people the pretty much how far you can go with these boats these days and so you know I, that's that's kind of what i'm thinking when i'm when i'm gonna put when i put together the uh the the outline for the seminar so and i've got a lot nice. of really cool tricks yeah man you do and i can't wait to see that because we we really man, i really hope we can have a like i said earlier a top 10 litter with people of all different styles just to show how the kayak is so diverse and you, you know my style being simple is very much like it you know counter opposing to your style you know what i mean i want less stuff 
And but your more stuff, you've got it laid out in a way where it can be efficient and not be in the way. And all of those tools are helping you find the fish, you know, with the electronics. And so it's working for your style, but it's just cool that, you know, there's different styles. And Jody, you come from a river fishing background in West Virginia. You know, I know you're, you're good with electronics as well, but not, you're not some, you know, person out there is going to have two and three graphs and, and all this stuff going like crazy. I think you probably prefer to, you know, fish simple, uh, you know, when possible, but tell us about how your style is a little bit different and, and how you think, you know, the various styles might play in these kayak adventure series events. Yeah, I mean, you know, first of all, I, these events, the way you've got them set up, man, I think it's, I'm going into this more with like a, this is going to be like a vacation for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it because it sounds so fun, man. And I, I love the ideas with, with the old theater. And I think, I'm hoping that the public may attend, you know, get a chance yeah. to come into these old theaters and they get to meet the anglers. I think that's a great idea to, so if they get some idea of what's going on out there and it, it could cause, you know, memberships to go up. It could be, I mean, I think it's a really good thing, but yeah. Yeah. Back, back to the simplicity of things, you know, when I get on a, on a river, all I need is a paddle and, and, a, and a boat, man. I, you know, I don't use, you know, I will use, you know, according to the river, I will use a motor on the back, but that's about as far as I'll, I'll go with a lot of it, you know, and I'll probably downsize my rig for, you know, the Flint River. And I just something about being on the river that I love anyway. And I just, I, you learn to read the currents and, and the drops and the ledges and the holes. And I don't know, it's, you're, it seems like I'm more in tune with it. So I don't need a lot of stuff on there. But now, you know, when I when I get on a big body of water, you know, that, that changes a bit. I go to a bigger boat and I'll put more electronics on. I'll, I'll have a, a unit and I use uh, forward facing sometimes uh, according to what kind of fishing I'm doing. But I'm really looking forward to getting back to the basics with this with this series. I think it's going to be great. I, I think it's going to grow. Yeah, man, I think so. I hope so, uh, for sure. I mean, I think it probably speaks to a lot of folks out there, you know, whether you do love to use all the electronics and rig it out as to the nines like, like Gene or just do the simple fishing, you know, and go to the, the creeks and, and the bridge accesses and the places that, you know, a lot of us, it's really that that's kind of what started kayak fishing boom was the fact yeah. that, well, we're sick and tired of how busy and crowded lakes are because yeah. they, they are bass boats are everywhere. And then the sport's so popular and, it, you know, it can only, lakes can only hold so many people. It's kind of like a golf course. You can only hold so many people yeah. on the course and all of a sudden, you know, there's going to be, you know, a lot of waiting around on the tee boxes. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to, the prices are going to go up because when, you know, if they get that many people, they're going to raise the price a little bit. Well, lakes are kind of like, they hit that point and they kind of maxed out to some degree. And we all just, but I think kayak fishing boom for the simplicity of it and to get to places that the boats can't get. But what's cool is, is we've, you know, now seeing, you know, obviously with what Gene's got there, they can, they can really catch them with the same technology and, and with the motors and torpedoes and we can move fast on lakes and, and obviously the big bass are in the lakes. Let's, you know, they're there. So it'll be cool to see how these styles, you know, kind of collide and, and uh, just, just see what happens. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a time and place for all of it, you know, I mean, yep, yep. Uh, uh, we wouldn't have it on our boats, you know, uh, you know, yep. I love, I love having my electronics in a lake. You know, I, I get to, you know, finding schools of fish or, or finding holes that you wouldn't normally see with your own eyes and stuff like that. It, it's good to have. It's it's a definite tool. Uh, right, yeah. but yeah, but not on a river. I mean, it's it's one of those yeah. things where I would never have this set up on a river. It just would be exactly. nothing but trouble. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing but trouble. Exactly. You're right. You know, the uh, Jody mentioned the theaters, and that's a pretty cool thing because we're going to get to show off your footage, and, and it doesn't have to be GoPro. Obviously, we, we think GoPro is the best and prefer that footage, but it, it could be anything. It could be your cell phone. It could be another, you know, action kind of camera. But at those theaters, man, it's going to be cool because, I mean, isn't it fun when you watch a football game and they're they're running the ball, they're doing sweeps, or you know, in, in the rounds, they're doing – passes short intermediate you know throwing the long ball like all these different variety of scoring is happening in the game it's not it just a run play every time or something those are the yeah. those are the most fun football games to watch and then for us i think when you go to those theaters and we put this footage on the screen it's going to be cool when we, just to see like 
how different. And honestly, if you watch that Bassmaster Elite at, at uh, Harris Chain, it was pretty similar. They actually had an event, you know, for, it's been a while, but they had an event that it, you've seen, you know, I saw who was a uh, KJ Queen was in a canal, sight fishing, fish on bed, ended up third place. You know, you definitely had Garrett and JT Comp Tompkins using, you know, live scope out in the middle. And and then you had other people just flipping and in the reeds and shallow water. So when they're cutaways to different anglers, it was just cool to see how many different ways there are to catch a bass and get the job done. And it's pretty cool that we'll be able to put that footage on the big screen at the theater, which I know probably touches you a little bit, uh, Jody, in the sense that like you know, you've got that artistic side to you. And these are very historic and artsy, these theaters. And that's, you know, I know that like, you're going to love, trust yeah, me, you will I love going and seeing the historic theater. They are, yeah. they are very cool. I know uh -oh. you're going to enjoy that for sure. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I was filibustering, <laughs> just hoping that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, and look at how efficient this was. Look at this. He flips out the net. Like it's nothing. <laughs> and Jack attack wow. leverage landing that for the, for the win. Man, this is a, this is a first smooth. for us. Look at that. Oh god, that was a first. I'm yeah. getting a 20 incher, bro. <laughs> 20 <laughs> incher. So I was that's, a, that. that's a 15. All right, Jody, we're gonna see. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. We're gonna find out. Gene, are you on Guttersville? <laughs> I'm on Guttersville. <laughs> Guttersville. So I, right, so. I guide here now, Drew. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, yeah, that's a yeah. Good good segue into your yeah. Well, I'm here. Sure. I'm here You're, pretty much every week. Every week he's there. You're not. You don't live far from there at all. So I figured you might be. And I'm. I'm just curious because we're going to be fishing Gunnersville for the Bassmaster kayak series. So, all right. So let's see how many people can guess how long this fish is. I'm going with 19. I, I'm going to go I'm with going. 18 and, Eight, and a half. 18 and a half. Yeah. Okay. Well, you said 19. 18 and a half. I'm going to play 18 and a three quarter. It's 19 and three quarters. Oh, oh. oh. man. <laughs> <laughs> with the mouth closed, Drew. Drew. All right, there you go. With oh, the yeah. mouth closed. But did you pinch the tail? Yeah. I did not pinch the tail. Because right, in bass faster, you, you can it. pinch the tail. Yeah, but it still wouldn't have made. It was barely nineteen three quarters, so it wouldn't uh, have made twenty. Probably not. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's a cool Good segment there. Yeah, well, we should clip that, post it. <laughs> um. So he's in the lead there. So yeah, I, we want to see how that likes fishing. It's obviously fishing good. We got Bassmaster Cox series heading there. Uh, I don't know. About about a month, month. Like, yeah, little a month over a month. Away. Yeah, their their cutoff date is twenty one days. Anybody who uh, yeah. wants to hire me before then is fine, but after then your name's getting sent over to to the yep. authorities. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, that was so cool. Um, and see that that clip right there. I know we didn't get you know you got it on your GoPro from behind you. Yeah. Oh yeah. And GoPro we had we got 40. you on the on the yeah we got you on the front here. We so, got to do a collab with that clip. <laughs> we should do a collab with that that clip. But uh, no problem, just, just think, man, Gene, you end up in the top 10 at a kayak adventure series event. You go on stage. All you had to do is trim that clip to that minute, the, the yeah. cast and catch. That's it. It's all we need is one angle. You don't need to, some big edit. If you go to kayak adventure series.com, there's a already a drop down where it says GoPro or maybe it says, it says footage submission form. Click on it, get that trim clip and just submit it like through the, through the uh, cloud, whatever you want to call it, you know, yeah. cell signal. And it goes, it won't take long to get a minute clip. And then boom, we got it. Billy and Jake and I and the team, we just, we say, all right, who's in our top 10? Who do we have a clip from? And then we will probably even try to message everyone and say, do you have a clip? But well, let's, let's suppose that Gene didn't have any cameras running. Here's what you guys need to do for the kayak adventure series. And we will have a show that's more about the, the GoPro and the filming later. All you got to do is this, take G your phone, just like Gene's using his phone right now to you know film himself to watch so we can watch him turn it around before you release that fish put it have some sort of mount where your phone can sit hit record on, on landscape not portrait landscape like gene is right here and then just hold that fish up and pan it across that lens real real quick you know i mean real slow but i mean real quick like your clip's going to be 10 15 seconds and then just say fist pump and say you know 19 and three quarters let's go or whatever and then let it go at very minimum, we should have that from every angler. You know what I mean? At, at yep. best, hopefully a, the GoPro from behind. And that's just cool to see. Like, you know, the motion of the person at the time, you know, and, and seeing that fish, you know, that's just going to be pretty cool. So anyway, but um, what but else I, do you guys, Billy, Jake, you guys got anything? Or so what I think I, what I love about this whole thing, so I'm not fishing the tournament. 
And what I yep. love about it is that it's it's very family oriented, but it's more importantly, it's brotherhood oriented. You know, this whole thing is about getting together, having a good time, throwing a few fish in, in you know, yeah. on the on the board and having, you know, and just loving each other and having, to, you know, getting to know more people and new yeah. people and everything else. So, you know, I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's going to bring yeah. back the camaraderie of the sport. I, I You know, I was talking with a friend of mine last night and I, he was asking me about the kayak series. And, you know, <clears throat> we get so wrapped up in competition, you know, when I'm fishing the trails, when I, when I go out, I'm, I've got to get my pre-fishing in. I've got to get, you know, I've got to get everything lined out. I got to get, there's all this stuff that I was so have to be so serious about. And when I, the way I'm going into this is it feels more like I said it earlier, like it's, like it's going to be a vacation, but I, I want to compete, but it, it's, this doesn't seem to be right. like, the top priority for me to go there and win this thing and make sure that I've got all this stuff. I'm just going to go fish, you know, and I, I miss yep. that a lot. And especially I have a chance to fish rivers. I can get out in portage. I can, you know, I can, uh, you know, mm -hmm. before they made the rule where you had to stay in your kayak at all times and all, all the series are doing this now, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I used to, just get out and walk the bank, you know, get cooled off, you know, and just tie my kayak around my waist, you know, and you can't do that anymore. And, uh, yeah. I, I'm really looking forward to that. It's just going to be a, a, a lot funner uh, event, I think by doing it this way. Yeah. Yeah. It should be fun. Uh, for sure. And let, letting people do that kind of stuff. And it's, I think it'll be a little safer, you know, people, may not feel comfortable with certain rapids and things like that and or certain logs that are down and maybe it's, it's creating a strainer so they, it's a little safer for them to be able to get out and they make the call on what's what their skill level can do what they want to go under or around or or portage and you know around as well so little you know that's exciting that people can do that and you know those other series are awesome they got those rules and everything for a reason of course and we we love fishing them and they're great but it's it variety is you know the spice of life it's you know there's there's a multiple kinds of other you know bass fishing leagues and tournaments that have different rule sets and everything than the elites and the bbt and all that there's i mean look at the differences between those you know it's it's there's a quite a few differences in the rules for or even major league fishing and bass master so it's not it's a good thing that the, the anglers have variety they got options and uh we're just you know providing that option of this little bit more laid back event with you know the thursday what you said what you guys both said is is critical how we structure this because and I've said this before on, on this podcast and plenty of others, but when the sport gets so serious, which is what kind of what Jody was alluding to, you know, yep. and, and look, I love fishing that stuff. The serious hardcore, it's fun to me. Like that highest level of competition, dude, it is fun. Yep. Yeah. Am I nervous? Am I about to throw up every morning before I take off? Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's fun too. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. super fun. Um, but you can't have both in the sense that like you can try, but at some point when people start doing it for a living, and the PJ Tour is the best example. You don't see those guys partying at 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. when they got a 6.30, 7 a.m. tea time. They can't. It's their living. They've got – they are focused like 100% of the time on their craft. They'll go party when they're not, you know, in a tournament, not, you know. John Daly, not but playing a tournament. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, John Daly is true. That's yeah. true. That's a good, that's a good point. Uh, but this is kind of like, all right, let's make this a little bit more laid back and, and just more fellowship, camaraderie, and you can – you know, the way we got it formatted where Thursday's the opening ceremonies and, and you don't get on the water until Friday at three. Hopefully you're at the Bass U brunch learning from Gene and, and Jeff Little and myself and others who will be at that uh, first one. The, the fisheries biologist, they're going to teach about shoal bass that will be there at 10 a.m. But Thursday's opening ceremonies, if you think about it, we're having food, music, games. We're going to eat. If you notice, we're going to the Riverbend restaurant after the Spreewell Bluff Park opening ceremonies uh, because obviously it's going to get dark and you know, we want to keep, keep hanging out. Right. So we're going right basically just down the road to river bend restaurant, the best view of the river and great food. And you're going to hang out there. But anyway, there's no reason to like, you don't really have to like leave and say, I got to go back and rig and do this. Cause I got to get up at four 30 in the morning because you don't get on the water till three and the seminars don't start till 10 in town. So it just frees everybody up to say, Oh man, this is relaxing. This is great. We could just go hang out and have fun, rub shoulders with Gene and Jody, you know, and all the other big names that'll be there. The Jeff Littles, the Alex Rudds, the Russ Snyders that, you know, anybody else that's in this event that you can go down a list and look at the, uh, 
if the you know who's registered, but that kind of frees us up, I think, to just relax. And then the same thing happens on Saturday. It's so much easier for people to take off work on Friday. Am I right? I mean, that's way easier to get off a Friday than it is a Monday. Monday's the busiest day. So by ending this on Saturday, it's again like guys, it's Saturday. Let's just we're all gonna be there to support each other at the result, which is great. We can have a packed theater and we will have a lot of community people at that theater, Jody, because the festival, the city's telling us they're gonna have like anywhere between the whole the whole day that between three o'clock and you know, ten or nine o'clock, whenever the festival ends, they're gonna have like five to seven thousand people there. So when they announce on the speaker, go to the theater for the results of the Sholy Palooza, I think we're gonna have a lot of community people in that theater because you know they hunt and fish in that county. So I think we'll definitely have a lot. But basically yeah. when that's over, we have a and what a great opportunity for for anglers to to uh, spread the word, you know, uh, of the sport. And I mean what a great opportunity yep. to mix and mingle, you know. And and I, mean, on I the, think that's huge. Yep. On the selfish side of things, you know, if you want great content for yourself, if you're up there on stage getting an award and somebody takes a whole bunch of pictures and a video of you up on a stage getting an award, it it gets eyes. It really oh, yeah. does. And we're, you know. we're, we actually pay out the top 15 percent because of that. We yep. want more people to get on that stage, to have that moment on a true stage with theater lighting. With yeah, There's Steve Owens popping in. He's going to make it uh, down hopefully by Thursday, but he's registered. Excited to have him and, uh, Drew, you know. What? What's the minimum length fish? Ten. So we've gone down inches, even so two inches. Minimum is ten. Minimum yeah. is ten. So the smallest possible limit is fifty. Is fifty That's great inches, math right? skills you got there, Gene. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking. I'm thinking here. I'm thinking. Yeah. So my thought is, I want to throw something out there personally. Um, the first person to get that, because you have an award for that, don't you? Well, we have the micro bag division. Yeah, the, the micro, micro bag finesse, But that's actually the five. So everything that's under 10 inches, 9.75 and under, if you are registered in the micro bag, you can submit it to that tournament, you know, that separate mm -hmm. tournament. And that right there is the, the minimum of is five inches. It's five to 9.75. We had to put Dude, a minimum we, just because. Yeah, yeah, you had to because it wouldn't you, work. It wouldn't work. Yeah. You got to be able to. Yeah, see you'd be it trying to measure fish. a fish with your pinky, like. Yeah, it wouldn't work. So, so yeah, but but I like where Gene's going with this. He's yeah, saying I'm, the smallest, the smallest, uh, non micro bag. Yeah. Yeah, non micro bag. I'm thinking, my, just out thinking out loud, but I might I might end up doing this. I'd love to give a trip to the first yeah. person to ever hit just 20 inches, or 25, or no, just, <laughs> the, the best 10 to hit that perfect. Oh, 10. I mean, for the, you know, uh, no, the best five fish, ten inches a piece. Yeah. 50. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the 50? first person to hit fifty on hit the nose it. and finish the tournament with fifty. I'd love to be able to just go to their place and be you know, bring like, and just you know go pick them up at their house and go fishing. So you're saying, yeah. so right to death. That, but Gene, in the individual division, the smallest is ten. So they would have right. to not. They would have to not submit their twenties to get this trip. But I think what you're trying to do, or maybe, I don't know if you're trying to do this. So you're saying, so you're asking someone to throw the tournament. To right. Oh my God. That might be worth it. You have to weigh the pros and cons. I mean, if you're not you on them, them, you know. Put them in your live well, and then decide at the end if you want to, exactly. you know, delete all your fish and upload your tins. <laughs> it's like, well, I had a hundred inches, but I really wanted that trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll, I will travel to their house and we'll go fish whatever lake they want to fish around in okay. there. Okay. See, I thought you were going with the micro bag. See, we're curious if anyone's going to hit 25 inches because that's the Holy Grail micro bag limit. That's the, the smallest you can get is 25. Smallest you can get. And that will be a challenge. Like, trust me, people think yep. that's easy. It's not. It has a lot to do with when the fish spawn and where you can find the fish that spawn later, maybe depending on the time of year. Well, right now, not that big, you know, it's yeah. like if they're born, they like, you know, they grow like 10,000% in the first like two weeks. And then exactly. they get that like, you know, they hit 10 inches really fast in their life. Break your Ned Riggs out and go to town. Yeah. <laughs> this first event will be very hard to find a five because you think about it, it's in May. The fish are just spawning right now, exactly. April and May. You're not going to get this year's spawning class. You're going to be catching last year. So how can you find anything that's under 10 inches? You know, I mean, I know they're out there. Trust me, they're, they're out there. Oh, yeah. But they stunt somehow fish stunt in certain, you know, areas and they just don't, there's not enough food for them to grow at that massive rate. Some, so it's tricky, but it, trout somebody magnet, will do it. Get you a trout, trout magnet. magnet and a jig and bobber and you'll catch those fish. Yeah. There you go. There's, there's a tip right there, but 
to, to finish the other thought that the theaters is really cool. Then being on that true stage with the lighting and, and even, you know, Steve's in the, in here, they did that at, uh, what was it? Lake Murray. And it was, I, I asked him about it and how it went at the, at the Bassmaster championship. And he said, it was awesome. It was so cool. And, and being able to use that. And, was, you know, I think that's where kayak fishing, because we don't have lives, we're kind of figuring out a, our, our path. You know, we're trying to think outside the box and be different, which we are from bass boats. And this is one way we can do it by using this footage, how easy it is to transfer footage this, these days, get it on those screens and have that real stage. Like Gene was saying, because paying out the top 15%, they're going to come on stage and get an award and being on that stage. Yeah. You may not, we're not going to talk to the top 15%, we're going to talk to the top 10, like actually give them some time with the mic, but we will bring the top 15%, whether it's 30 people or 20 or whatever, uh, you know, on stage and they'll at least get a moment to maybe say one sentence and get their award and walk across the stage. And then we'll hand them a check. Amanda Brandon will be at this first one. Boom. Here's your check. Thanks for fishing with us. And then what's cool back to the camaraderie thing is the after party, the designated after party will be at the secret speakeasy that I'm telling you, and that's actually where the Bass U brunch is going to be had too. the secret speakeasy in this town is something that you do not want to miss out on. I'm telling you right now, it is unbelievable when you walk in this place, what is going on here in this little town and, and what they have at this place. So we'll see you at the after party. And then again, it's Saturday. It's so we can all just celebrate the night away and hang out as long as we want. Again, get some information, glean some information off these, these pros that you guys will be, uh, you know, rubbing elbows with all during the event and, uh, and create some friendships and some memories, like you guys said. And then, and then, uh, of course, Sunday, you got the optional, uh, ACA classes, which Billy, you could pull that graphic up if you want. And you got the optional side pot Sunday tournament. So if you want to fish on Sunday, six hour tournament, you just from when you check in on tourney X, it's six hours. You can start whenever you want. You can start at 10 AM. You can start at 11, start yep. at, at 6 AM. It doesn't matter. 10, six, six hours. And you win some, uh, batteries plus, uh, prizes, the new, the new batteries plus stuff. So that's pretty cool. 25 and, and bucks. The other thing I wanted to hit on is, is if you guys out there have never caught a shoal bass. Oh yeah. If you have, that is one of my favorite fish on this planet to catch Yeah. because imagine a small mouth that's just pissed off <laughs> and you're trying to catch them in about this much water and super and, and 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 current and rapids and i'm not talking about class fives you know yeah. like jody queen hits all the time i'm talking about i'm probably talking about ones and twos but they're in yeah. there and you're freaking jacking them and it's so much fun yeah it's so awesome much. man man look at the eyes on that one yeah, yeah. A, and they're just pissed off smallmouth in in hot strong current it's just all they are that's right and they get long i mean i caught a 24 i'll show a picture of a 24 yeah. and a quarter which and they still... will and they will hit you at your boat oh yeah they a will lot. you'll be surprised yep. who's that guy there we go mr <laughs> tyler bean making an appearance on the show here today and you know you big baits like that so here's a little tip and we'll, we'll bring mullet angler in later maybe he'll even talk about some of his favorite baits that he throws but they'll eat big yeah. stuff for sure a um shaky head shaky head black finesse worm will get you a long ways on that lake. We'll get you a limit for sure. Or on there on those rivers. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That, look at that stuff, shaky head. So cool fish. Excited about the uh the Sholy Palooza coming up, guys. And appreciate everyone's support and, and just continue to share it. Let's keep growing it and get it getting these events as big as possible. And uh, we'll see if we can't rise rise the all ships with the tide, right? As they say. So um Anything else, uh, Jody, that you're excited about, or, or what about? Let's talk real quick about the either the team division or the um, the, the strategy difference on that four hour Friday afternoon sesh. You know what I mean? Because what do you think about that and how that's going to change the strategy of this whole thing? Well, I don't know. You know, <clears throat> I just plan on <clears throat> I've got four hours on on that day to go out and just I mean go for the biggest fish I can go for. You know, I just just throw everything all caution to the wind and just <laughs> yeah. throw things that I wouldn't normally throw, throw big giant top water swim baits or whatever I want to. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but that's going to be a really good evening bite. If you think about it, you know, yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's basically my strategy for that day. And then the next day I might get a little more serious and, and, and downsize a little bit if I'm not doing too good, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see the different strategies of people going into it because, you know, I've got mine. That's basically what I'm going to do, and then uh, it'll be interesting to see. I and mean, once they get on stage, I'm sure we'll find out how they did it. 
but yeah. you know, I'm like you with, with doing it that way, you know, it ends up on, on Saturday and we have the awards and, and, and then you have the after party and then most people are going to have the weekend off, you know, and then Sunday is a great travel day for you to get back. I mean, the, the cities aren't, you know, nearly as, uh, yeah, traffic ridden, you know, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's just going to be a more relaxed atmosphere. I think it's going to be easily done. I think once people see how easy it is to be able to do this thing that we're going to get, it's going to be really, really good. That's a good yeah. point, honestly, because having just come back on Monday morning from Texas, yeah. awful, man. Yeah. I, I was I was at 6 a.m. driving through St. Louis, and I was like, you could tell yeah. all the 7 a.m.ers <laughs> were going to work. Yeah, I've got this like 13-foot kayak sticking out of the back of my truck just praying that someone doesn't crash into me that's it <laughs> i never even thought about that um I mean, that's interesting monday's the worst travel day yep. by far <laughs> yeah but it'll definitely uh yeah the friday's gonna be we've talked about it probably a lot on this this show but it, it will be interesting to see how different people take different strategies for that day whether they just maybe they try a lake or the river for you know the opposite of what they want to do on saturday they try the opposite one time and, and maybe you know it's hard to float a big 12 mile section of river on four hours you know, be, you know you might single access somewhere on a lake or a river and less, would be, less pressure mm-hmm. on the with boats. what would be wild is mm-hmm. if somebody fished that four hours on the river and then camped on the river right camped on like you know a designated camping spot and then continued the float on Saturday morning when flying's in. We'll have to check the rules. I don't think you can do that per the rules. We'll have to go check them on that to make sure that's legal to do that. Because that would be awesome. It, back, it would be. But back in River Bassin days, we did have to uh, not allow that because of people like it would float down the night before in the dark. They would float in the dark because after you don't get your identifier till basically right. dark. You know what I mean? So we, for safety, we didn't want people doing that. So I don't think that's legal on the rules though. But that was a see you're already thinking outside the box, and we need to double check that that's that's in those rules that you can't you can't do that. But you can do you can access anywhere else. It's public. Hey man, I'm just thinking about those like 20 mile floats and how to make them happen. <laughs> well, with the, with a motor, you can you can cover it. You can get, yeah. you can you can pull yeah, it off. There's got, not a whole lot of those on those rivers anyway. So there's not there's some long ones. It might be like 14 or something, but there's not. Which is with a motor, I'm telling you, and even with a paddle, you get you get 30 minutes before lines in to paddle. So you're you're looking at getting a couple miles down already, and then you're fishing your way down fast. And then afterwards, if you think about it, you know we don't we're not at the theater till six o'clock. I mean, yeah, you know. So as long as you got signal and you want to paddle out for an hour, yeah, you can definitely know, do you can like do 15, it. 16 miles with a motor or even a paddle. Because I I did yeah. it a few weeks back with Ryan in his flip yeah. cat, and that was that's not a river right. kayak, and we still. We still did it, so. Yep, but um, it will be interesting to see though with with the afternoon, like Jody was alluding to, having an afternoon bite is going to be kind of cool. We just don't get that very often in tournaments, so it's going to be cool to see how that affects it. How the less pressure from the public, the other just public anglers out there fishing, locals will you know. Friday, it'll be interesting to see what happens Friday. I like Jody's idea of just swinging for the fences on Friday because then, let's say you just get one fish, one or, or two. All you're really looking for is probably one, honestly, because you got all day on on Saturday. Yeah. You're probably looking for one fish that's going to make your five fish limit, just one giant, and then you know, okay, you know. And if you don't get it, or if you get two, or or if you don't get any, it just totally changes what you're going to do on Saturday. Then at least you know, like, okay, I need to just try to, you know, get a limit or get solid, you know, whatever. So that'll be cool to see, and yeah, and, and a big see. jolly mm-hmm. will hit a eight nine inch bullshed. Yes. Absolutely, I know that will. for a fact. <laughs> they will. So, and the, the weather and the water conditions. We'll, we'll bring mullet angler in here in just a second. I see him in the green room. He's on the water too, Gene. So now we got to see if he can catch one when uh, when he Uh-oh. comes on, Mister uh, Daniel Fresh Hamilton. Bro. Yeah, pressure. Gene caught it. Gene caught a nineteen and three quarters, Daniel. So you got that to uh, to try to beat. Um, <laughs> but any other lasting last comments, man, I appreciate you guys coming on and sharing your wisdom. You, you're definitely two of the best in the industry that have ever done it. And, uh, man, just appreciate you guys and your time. But last, last comments that you can think of that you want to touch on before we bring Daniel in. I uh, just, uh, man, I just, uh, appreciate, uh, you know, all the hard work you put into this drew. I mean, we talked about this at ICAST a couple of years ago and then last year at ICAST, you had it pretty much nailed down and then. It's all come to fruition, and I appreciate it, and I'm going to be uh, looking forward to it, man. Well, thanks, buddy. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate you, and uh, have a good rest of your day, Gene. 
Ah, Parting- man, I feel the same way, dude. I wish I had your energy because it, it's, you know, whatever <laughs> yeah. you're taking, man, you need to share. <laughs> so, but uh, <laughs> man, I'm just enhancing. excited about being able to get down and do so- and see something different and do something different and yeah, and yeah. and help the community grow back to to and get bigger the right way. Sure. You know? Yeah, absolutely. So, and and I think we're we're on the right path. You know, Steve and AJ and Chad and and every we we communicate real well, work on the schedules. If we're going to overlap, it's going to be two different parts of the country, you know, what I mean, on weekend and again, this this isn't like this elite level, you know, or anything, but we still want to try to work together, communicate uh, so there isn't less overlap and we can really, you know, like we looked at the, the leaderboard, you got so many new and different names that you've never seen before because if we can continue to grow it from this kind of beginner, intermediate, you know, more laid back event side it's going to help filter up that direction too which is what we're all trying to do that's our goal so we keep communicating well working together i've even communicated with them in the sense that you know hey they, they have to potentially go to some places like a gunnersville where they know they're going to get this giant a- attendance they do i mean bassmaster has a lot of overhead they got to get things covered uh you know more anglers that enter is definitely better those tours and departments and cities work really well with them already so it but what's cool is hey I'm not going, we're not going, the kayak adventure series is going to new places every year. That's the, that's the goal. That's the idea. It's adventure, right? So, you know, I talked to Steve and I was like, Hey, if you guys, and I've mentioned this to uh, Chad and AJ too, is like, Hey, if you guys ever want any of the contacts that we're using to go to one of our places that we've found uh, and, you know, happy to give them to you guys. So if we expose something like a Susquehanna was exposed, you know, when, you know, Hobie started going there, then awesome. That's just better for kayak anglers to have new, fisheries that aren't really the normal bass boat fisheries you know and uh i really think it's cool to do like i know steve owens when he was on a couple weeks ago or last week whenever that was talking about maybe using lake worth and and eagle mountain for the Bassmaster championship jody would not hate that one bit <laughs> but uh but like doing more like shreveport where we've done before multiple lakes out of one city and i think that's a, a secret sauce again something different that bass boats can't do but we can so yep. we can hit these new tourism apartments, new cities and new places. And then if we expose something that's exciting and cool, man, I'd love to see bass or anybody go, you know, there afterwards because uh, we just want what's best for the anglers. And, and that's why I hired Amanda Brandon at real tournament management to run the tournament director side. So I don't even have access to the tourney X GPS pins. I don't know where people are catching the fish. I don't want to know because if we go there with bass or anybody else, I just don't want to have that information in my brain nor is it, it's not fun to me. I like finding my own, you know, fish anyway. That's the fun of this whole thing for me. So you, you will be hard pressed to find anybody more professional than Amanda. I, I'm, I can uh, yeah. attest to that personally. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's great. So <laughs> yeah. we got a, we got a good team, Billy, Jake, Amanda, the whole crew, everyone that's helping out Tyler being yeah. just Eric with the website. I mean, there's, I'm missing somebody, but you guys will, will hear about them on stage. Um, Zach over there at uh, dark horse tackle has done way more than anyone ever realized yeah. to help us out, man. He's, he's awesome. So thank you guys for coming on. We'll bring Daniel in. Appreciate all the, uh, the tips and advice and just the comments here, guys. A great show. Yep. Good luck. Good luck, Daniel. Good luck. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> later. Yeah. Later. later. <laughs> All right. Uh, before we bring Daniel in, we're going to do a quick viewer voicemail, oh, viewer which voicemail. is brought to you by Yak Attack. Not to be confused with the call me maybe Dark Horse Tackle, like you just mentioned. So yeah. Yak Attack viewer voicemail. Let's play one. We did. We got one today. So and then we'll bring in Daniel. I'm looking in the green room, he's still he's still reeling. He doesn't have a fish on. If he has one on, we're bringing him in. He's he has paddling, one on. We'll, we'll, he's yeah, paddling. But, so okay. All right, here, here we go with our voicemail. And then uh, it's a question, so we can answer the question after we hear this. Hey, guys, it's Ryan from RJM Fishtails, your favorite kayak angler. Anyway, so for the competition for Shola Palooza, since most of us have trailers, should we come down with a trailer or the kayak in the back of the truck when we come downtown? Would it be better to not have a trailer this trip and there's plenty of parking, or should we just come with a pickup and a kayak hmm. in the back of the truck or a rooftop? Let us know. Thanks. That's a tough one. That's a good question. Um, and I will I'll share my screen. You guys can see here. Um, what I would recommend is do whatever you want to do because, and here's why I say that. Um, let me share this screen here. If you go to Shirley Palooza's page, if you read the um the details here your uh, basic event information here, you'll, you'll notice that um, closing ceremonies, it says here, the, the festival is downtown Thomason at the square. 
parking is at First Baptist Church. So now that we know that, we'll go to Thomaston, Georgia here. And I'll show you where that is. And it, we'll probably bring a map of this up. You know, like, anyway, you guys got my screen here. So the First Baptist Church, if you notice, this is the uh, where the festival is going to happen all in here. This downtown, this is the Ritz Theater. Okay. And then the festival is all, the streets are going to be blocked off right here starting, I think, at three o'clock. Um, and then all this whole street and all in here, you're going to have vendor tents and booths. And this is the kid zone. This whole city block here is all bounce houses and just games and kid zone. You'll be having drink. You're allowed to take drinks, you know, on the streets if you want to have an adult beverage. Um, and then, uh, you know, live music. I think the stage will be set up right here in front of the square uh, or the, the courthouse. But then there's the theater will go into at six. But for parking, it's just right here. First Baptist Church. Look at this giant lot. So that's where you guys want to park if you have a trailer. It's a it's a block away from the action, so real close. But having said all that, I would try to do this if you can. Go to your back to your Airbnb or your hotel or wherever you are first. If you want, drop the trailer potentially or car and and or carpool with anybody else that's at your Airbnb. Maybe hop in a quick shower if you need to, whatever. You know, I would I would try to get there as fast as you can because you're you know you want to enjoy this festival and it ends at five thirty and. Let's face it, if you're fishing an hour away and you got a 30 minute paddle just to get back to your ramp or, or motor and then you got to load, you're looking at maybe two hours even all from lines, you know, maybe not getting there till five. So, has he got one? Stage don't got one? Oh, sorry. I just took him off the stage. Oh, oh yeah. We both... got one. No, I don't. Well, I think I might be hung up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I saw you. I saw you reeling so fast. I was excited there. But uh, but yeah, we'll leave you, dude. I was, <laughs> <laughs> I had one backstage a minute ago, and then it came off, and I was like, dang. <laughs> well, we but... just wrapped up our our question there, Daniel, um, about you know where they should park if they should bring a trailer or not, and uh, I, I mean, you know, if you can get away with not having a trailer at any time, obviously you're getting better gas mileage, and it's it's nice to have like not have to have it, but it's a, a lot of our setups, board. yeah. It's convenient to put it in the lakes, but it is. it's it's that burden that you have. I mean, it, my my recommendation is do what you're comfortable with, because even if you have a trailer and let's say you're going to a river spot, you can still launch there. Yeah. You're just going to have to probably drag it a little bit or move it like you would if it was in the truck. And who's to say that, like, if you're pulling it with a truck, you couldn't leave the trailer at the Airbnb, right. put your kayak in the back of the truck and go that way. So, like. I think if you're comfortable with the trailer and you have one, you might as well bring it. Because who knows? Yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe you put it in a lake, you know? Uh, you don't know, yeah. You so never bring know. It. Bring it if you got it. If you have to even park it downtown, you saw there's plenty of parking in that First Baptist lot there. So, and you know, your system that you have is really important part of tournament angling because I took a trailer down to Possum Kingdom and it was a nightmare. Like, I, we didn't know what we were doing. Like, it was like the first time we'd ever trailered on this thing. And it was like, we looked like amateur out there trying to launch it. Meanwhile, if I was on my truck bed, I would have had it in there and out of the thing already. So, yep, exactly. I definitely think comfort level plays a huge part in like, your strategy because, like, Pros trying something new in a tournament is always like it's kind of a risk. It is. Speaking of JT Hickman, he said, "Good question, Ryan. Uh, I'm going on with live with JT this week, I believe, on Thursday. Correct me if I'm wrong, JT. We'll go live on uh, with fishing with Gramps there. So, JT Hickman, always good to see you, bud, and appreciate all the support um, from you as well." The um, so now Daniel Mullet Angler, okay, you got to hear the story. Oh, yes. How did you, how did you become the Mullet Angler? Is this a self-proclaimed with obviously with the hair and the mullet? Just said this is this fits. I mean, I, I love it. Well, appreciate it, dude. I mean, the hair, the hair kind of came along right after COVID. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna grow it out, grow it out, and just let it let it go and see what happens, and then. I've always been like fishing and recording, but I never thought I would like start a channel until about last summer. I started to put videos together and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And it was like, I went, been fishing the Flint and made a lot of my videos and all the videos that I did. It was just so fun, like putting all the stuff together and then watching it and being like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then other people seeing it and I was like wanting to share my experiences and stuff. Now, did you like, did you was, go to the Bassmaster Classic? I did. I didn't fish I it. I think I saw I you there. And, uh... Oh yeah, what's up, dude? Yeah, I saw you there, and I was like, "Man, that's an epic mullet." And I was like, "Wait a second, I recognize that guy." <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, what's up, yeah. man? You did a good job at the classic interviewing and you know all your videos and and we've got you on here. You know, you just started your channel, and so you know it's not like every person we have on the show. It's not like we're trying to just bring on every Gene Jensen and the, all the biggest like names and followers. That, that's obviously important. They're you know on for a reason, but you just started your channel. You've got awesome passion for the sport. It's a very kayak adventure series type of, you know, passion really uh, that yeah. you've got. So we want to bring you on and let people know about what you got going on. And, uh, and, and obviously you're in Georgia. So we, I thought it would make a lot of sense because we want to know what the water temperatures are like, what the water clarities are like. We're only, we're less than, well, we're, I think this we're Friday starts the two week fishing window that you're allowed. Yeah. I think Friday starts the, where you're allowed to fish four days within that two weeks, starting this Friday, you get to pick which four, um, you know, if you're going to fish the kayak adventure series. So people kind of want to know what the wa weather's been like, what the water's like, you know, kind of tell us what, and you fish for these shoal bass, you know, I know you've, you've not been, you know, you're younger, so you haven't fished as long as, you know, some of us for these fish, but you've right. fished quite a bit, man. So tell us a little bit about the weather and water conditions and what people should expect if, you know, based on being two weeks out, a little over two weeks out. Yeah, it's uh it's been weird because Georgia is no offense, but Georgia's bipolar, man. One day it'll be super sunny and seventy and the other day it'll be like fifties and, and forties and you'll be wearing a jacket and be like, Why is it so cold out here? Yeah. But the water temp has been like sixty, I'd say sixty three, sixty four, maybe sixty five in some spots, depending on where you're at. The rivers the rivers have been starting to heat up more. You've got a lot more rain that we've had, and it's dirtied up the rivers, but they're starting to clear out a lot more than they were. So I'm going to try to go out Friday and see what happens. But, man, it's, yep. I, I love and I have a love and hate relationship with Georgia, though. Some days are like you come out here and the weather is just like nonstop beautiful. And you got these 30 mile an hour winds that come in. <laughs> <laughs> and it helps sometimes <laughs> to bite, though, too. Like today, I, I'm getting I'm getting blown around. That's why I keep picking up my paddle and stuff, and it's just it's crazy. So you've got the simple setup, you know what I mean? A lot of folks at Sholey Palooza are going to, you know, like use you know just the paddle kayak um, and just hop in a river or creek and and see what happens or or the lake. But I think most folks that just have a paddle simple setup might fish the rivers or creeks. So. But um, no, that's awesome, dude. I, it sounds like to me, I was over there, you know, we pulled you in the full screen. I was over there just kind of like doing this sort of thing, like licking my lips when you said 64, 65 or whatever, knowing that yeah. top water is mm -hmm. going to be on in a major way in yeah. two more weeks. And it's going to be crazy. And, and some fish will still be spawning. And that's kind of when the shoal bass spawn really late, late April, early May. Um, that's when they're still spawning too. So you're going to have post spawn. You're going to have some pre-spawn maybe. And then uh, a lot several on bed so if the water clears up enough to actually sight fish them that could oh, come man. into play but it may uh -huh. come into play in the lakes uh that are going to stay clear or even the chattahoochee which is, is the middle hooch is a lot clearer than the flint and the okmulgee so again if you're going to fish the flint or okmulgee you're probably going to want to find some big bright white and chartreuse and just get the gaudy loud power fish and stuff in your hand if you're on the hooch or the uh you know maybe the lakes you might be able to sight fishing with some more finesse kind of stuff and see them on bed. So it'll be interesting, but what are some of your favorite, you know, shoal bass tips or techniques and tactics um, that you want to share with folks? I know you're fishing the tournament, so you don't give away all the juice, but um, <laughs> yeah. So I would say for shoal bass, shoal bass are very territorial and they're very really aggressive. So if you think there's a swim bait that's too big, throw it. That's all I can say <laughs> because it's not too big. They will literally chase it down. They'll come out of nowhere and literally if it comes straight to you, they'll chase it all the way to you and blow up on it. It's it's amazing. And that's why Wisholies are probably one of my favorite fish to catch is because of how aggressive they are when they when they hit hit your bait. Mm -hmm. Another thing that's that's super good is I'd say and I'm I'm probably dropping a good one right here, but I'm not dropping everything, but <laughs> I'd say some kind of weightless, hear me out, weightless, weightless fluke or weightless Cinco. Yep. Because a lot of the time your fish are going to sit behind those rocks. And you throw it up in the current, depending on how the water level is. If it's super muddy, I'm throwing spinner baits, chatter baits, really working them down in the rocks and stuff where they're sitting. But if it's like pretty clear, you know, pretty clear water, I'm throwing something weightless and I'm just letting her drift. I catch a lot of fish that way. 
I think yeah. that's really underrated, honestly, like on the rivers, the weightless stuff. Cause like I started really throwing them a lot last year for smallmouth, like the little like four inch wacky rigs. And people thought it was crazy in the moment, but the reality is, is like, yeah, it's a really underrated technique because you can just drift it right in front of them. They see it come by and they're like, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. They swirl. You know, they have that <laughs> yeah, for real. swirling action. You know, with the Z-Man bait, having this elastic, it floats. I actually weight mine just with a slight weight and the buoyancy kind of counteracts it. So it just gives it that nice slow fall on the Z-Man streaks or whatever I'm using. It's a, like a soft plastic jerk bait. But it definitely gives you a, a chance to hold it in some of those little, little I'd say, eddies and pull little small ones where a spinnerbait or a chatterbait or something's going to move out of that strike zone a lot quicker. You know what I mean? This this gives you a little bit longer time. You know, there's something I've never shared on this about shoal bass that is is pretty cool. It's a lot about angles. A lot of these rocks, they're you know, they're called shoal bass for a reason. A lot of these shoals, they have like they're all kind of angled the same direction. There's these undercuts that are angled out of the same direction. Some of them, some boulders and the rocks in these rivers are your general round, your rocks, but some of them are very angled. And anyway, and, and this applies to any rock, but you know, on the, on the upper hooch, I did this a lot, the upper Chattahoochee above Lake Lanier, which isn't a balance, but the, it still applies. But if you get your kayak, if you can see where those, the angle, those rocks are aligning, even let's say it's a five foot rock or a four foot rock, the angle that, that rock is laying. Imagine, you know, paralleling a log, right? We talk about paralleling structure, like a log. So parallel the, the blowdown, right? Because the fish are hiding underneath it and they're going to come out and ambush it. Well, if you can get your boat in the right angle in the right position to parallel right in front of those rocks and behind them, but right in front, if they're staged more in the front, they will come out. So on the upper hooch, what I used to do is get out and I would literally just stand up and I would walk along these long rocks that are shoal rocks. And I would just take my lure just right there and just, just swim it right, right. And just, they would come out of the, out from the rock cause they couldn't feel me cause the rocks don't transmit the vibrations and they would just literally just come out from the rock and I just lift them up and that's it. They were right there. It could, it could be a five, four or five pounder. It doesn't matter. You can Dang. So, Get your boat at the right angle, and they're right underneath those undercut rocks, smaller than you've right. They're tucked in super tight, and you just got to get at the right angle because they can't see it if it's not at the right angle. Obviously, behind them, the rock's solid. They can't see or sense or feel it. Like a log, there's there's the water's going under and around the log, right? But a rock, it's connected to the riverbed. So it's got to be at the right angle, which is critical to keep those baits parallel in those rocks the best possible and cover the surface area around it so that's a good little tip there on today's and you got all banks and eddie's talking about spilling the juice he's probably talking about your tip but um i think we both we <laughs> yeah. both gave some good, good yeah. ones there you know another thing oh, yeah. you can do with those um like sinkos and stuff is actually do like the the jig heads the wacky jig heads because if you mm -hmm. if you do it right you know you, you wacky rig them with a jig head and you throw it into the current it'll kind of like sink while it's going through the current but if like you want to like let's say you want to get them under a ledge or under a log it'll sink eventually it'll hit the bottom and keep moving real slowly and it'll just kind of pulse as it goes yeah. past the spot you're wanting to to get and a lot of times they'll dart out and pick it up and then dart right back into the cover yep absolutely um that's a cool little lake you're on man hopefully uh hopefully you get one here as we man, uh, I, yeah i hope so i'm trying i'm trying to get to my juice spots before it ends <laughs> oh yeah you're good man um josh tatum says he thinks they already spawned on the flint for sure. And, and I'll say, I mean, you know, based on all the data from, and the fisheries biologist, uh, you know, Steve Sammons and Travis Ingram will be talking at uh, the Bass U brunch about this, but I would say that Josh is probably right. Like I'm sure like yeah. a lot of them have, but not every, all of them have, you know what I mean? You're still, I mean, every, I lived in Georgia for a long time and I still was catching fish that hadn't spawned out into into may you know into the very first couple weeks of may and they have a tighter window of spawning a little bit tighter than large mouth large mouth will start spawning maybe as early as march and some some spots you know and then all the way into like june shoal bass have a pretty wide window too but it's not obviously as wide as the large mouth but they um you'll still see them spawning there'll be some some spawning in certain certain rivers might have been a little popped off a little sooner than than the others but there's definitely still some out there that'll be spawning even come that event but, but Josh may be right. Maybe the majority have, you know, but all it takes is one good spawning fish, one or two on bed. 
you know, catch them, catch, measure, release them right there to make the difference in that tournament for you, you know, to, now, do, to win or lose. Do you guys feel like in that area, river levels play a big part in it? Because I know around here, like if the river gets high when it's warm, they will, it'll delay the spawn, you know, because like, yeah, they're not going to go spawn somewhere where they know the river is going to pull back. So, absolutely. 100%. Yeah, 100% agree with that. Because a lot yeah. of times, like, the rain, like, depending on how much rain, the flint, for me, from my experience, the flint gets muddy quick. Like, it take, doesn't it take does. much for it to get muddy. Yeah, it the does. The Oklahoma sure. clears up a little bit faster, seems like. But the flint, it, it stays, stays pretty stained, but when it's clear, it's clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. When it's the summer comes, it's clear. You know, what's cool about stained is you can have a lot of people floating on the flint because there's a really, really good population of shoal bass there. It's the, it's the river. If you're going to catch a shoal bass, it's the one with the highest population of shoal bass compared to other black bass species. But the, um, the stain, what's cool about it is, you know, you could have a ton of people go float down that river. It's a wide river. It's pretty big. It's not, it's no Susquehanna or anything like that, obviously, but it's a wide, still pretty good sized river. And you know, you can't cover the middle because shoal bass live out in the middle. They live on the banks. They live everywhere. So you can't cover the, the left bank, the, the middle and the right bank by yourself unless you are single accessing with the motor and literally just picking a mile or two apart. You see what I'm saying? So well, as people are doing these float trips down, don't be so freaked out if, if some of these floats have a bunch of anglers because – no one's covering all those rocks, dude. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Like, and with it muddy, being muddy, I mean, again, it's even trickier because, you know, if it's clear, it's another thing. You might be spooking all the fish and all those people and they can see a lot further. But I think that mud just helps us be able to have more people at these events and have, and more people be able to actually catch them um, and not get, you know, not get front ended by, you know, a bunch yeah, I mean, of rivers reload too. So like, even if someone's going yeah. past a spot, like, Fish yeah. can move in there between the time the one person goes and the time you mm -hmm. get there. I mean, look at look at like, you know, a 10 killer. Um, John Creek Fishing Adventures came in behind Drew like an hour later mm -hmm. at the boat <laughs> ramp. Caught 95, 94, 95 yeah. inches right there where, you know, Drew had been through that area. So. Well, I hadn't fished it, though. I didn't yeah, fish but it. I mean, okay, yeah. I'll say that. <laughs> but, I, but I motored. Yeah, I motored. You're probably, you're probably thinking yeah. like, man, I should have fished that. <laughs> Yeah, well, but I think it's just like yeah. a good point. Like I think it worked out okay. <laughs> every point in the river, like you're going to get them, they're going to reload. Yeah. Like they don't yeah. stay in a spot all day just because, you know, they a fish is on a log at 10 a.m. doesn't mean he's going to be there at 12 a.m., but there could be their one at, you know, 2 p.m. So it's, they definitely reload. I mean, the fact, and they change very quickly. Like the fact that I motored up and was going towards a deep pool that was a rocky pool that didn't have like laydowns in it, that I saw a bunch of big smallmouth in. And I'm glad I got distracted by throwing it some wood and catching some small spotted bass because I was trying to fill my limit. And that made me focus a little bit more on some of the wood because I wasn't going to focus on the wood because I'd seen all a bunch of big fish the day before in a pool around rock. And in pre-fishing, they just weren't on those the wood. And, and the water levels just fell to the point where it got calm enough where I threw that big Zaldangerous swim bait and caught it the 21 and a quarter. I would have never have thrown there. And that trust me, those fish were not there in practice. The water temperature wasn't. Uh, up enough it wasn't you know i had some cold days i think they pulled back to those deeper pools and they moved like that just in one day between the, you know the tournament first day of the tournament second they moved so they do it fast and you're right we can uh we can definitely get a bunch you could have 500 people at this tournament and people will still have enough water to fish especially because you can fish all free flowing tributaries you know all right. the way up and the lakes which brings me to the question for daniel how do you think the lakes are going to play do you think there is a world, uh, a strategy where maybe it's smart because this is not a shoal bass tournament. It's a black bass tournament. And there are right. big Alabama bass and big largemouth bass. And, uh, well, Alabama's remote, you know, there's Okmulgee's got them and the, the hooch has some. But, um, and, and so does the flint. But I think the, the flint ones seem to always get kind of small. They don't really, they're more like maybe they're actually true spotted bass genetics. I don't know who put those in there where, yeah. but they they never seem to get as big over there. <laughs> but um, how do you think the lakes could potentially play with largemouth? In this event, or how do you think the slower sections of these rivers that have actually big largemouth in them too could play? How, how are largemouth going to compete in Choli Palooza, or do you think it'll be one with shoal bass? Man, that's that's a really good question. But I'd have to say, I mean, some of those lakes you're looking at, like you know, High Falls have some of those bigger, bigger structures, like a lot of wood and stuff that those big largemouth are going to hang on. And coming right off the coming around it, they're right off the time that they're probably off the spawn. And they're probably getting up on the shad spawn. Dude, there's no telling. I would say 
Yeah. You could easily hook into one over 23. Easily. Yeah. But now for so. Sholies, for Sholies, it could happen too. Some of your slower sections, believe it or not, has some of the biggest fish uh, out of the current. Like some of those little bit slacker, slower sections will have giants. They'll be hugged up against wood. I mean, I've seen one. I've come across one just sitting under a tree looking right at me. <laughs> he didn't want to eat anything. Yep. So yep. There's, I think the large, it could definitely play in big time. Yeah, it could. I think that could be a strat. Maybe that's a uh, Jody Queen, what he's talking about. He's head hunting on that first day. So maybe we see him see him at a lake or a, a slower pool section of the river where the shoal bass are kind of known not to, to be as much, you know, especially this time of year. But yeah. the largemouth will be there, and that's where they're going to spawn. That's where they live year-round, the largemouth. They kind of – if there's a pool that's – half mile long or quarter mile long or whatever it is a mile long between shoals. That's where your large mouth are going to be. You yeah. know, they're going to be there and they live there. They don't ever, I don't think they really ever go above the shoal above them. And then below the, the shoal that's down below that, they kind of just own that half mile or quarter or mile long pool yeah. section. And they are giant. Like you say, in 23, 24 inch large mouth, this is Georgia. We're talking middle Georgia. This is a, a warm climate. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't very far, much further south of here than the world record was caught that's debatable whatever if that was actually the record or not whatever but i don't believe it <laughs> giants live in georgia there's no doubt about that so oh, you can catch 23s and 24s but we we uh, the question is can someone get can you get five large mouth that are that big you know we or got, is it gonna yeah, i don't got know two it's, days to do it you got two days yeah I, mean, I think that those big large mouth get vulnerable in that evening bite because you could go down yep. through those big pools with like you know just burning banks with a lopper plopper and yep. one of them's going to be like all right i guess so. <laughs> big swim, i gotta big eat this yeah. yeah yeah and i think drew drew made a good point about like the large mouth because that half mile pools you know the holes as we call them here that's how it is here too those largemouth, they will get in there and they will stay there their entire life now the small mouth they'll go up and down those large mouth, they'll just live in there and they, yeah. you know, they get big. Some dude caught a seven pounder out of our, one of our rivers here mm. last week, which is crazy. Man. 23 and a half inch. That's crazy. So I think that just so you guys know, if you're trying to, if you go and pre-fish for Sholey Palooza and you try to catch large mouth in these slow sections of these rivers, think about it like a typical large mouth fishing in a lake. It's, it's going to be, it's a challenge to get like five, you know, five or 10 bites a day is, you know, that's, it's, it's still tough. I mean, that's, you're not going to catch as many, but if you go after shoal bass, kind of similarly to smallmouth, if you just focus on the areas that smallmouth live or shoal bass and, and you know, and obviously in the shoal bass waters, they're going to get more fish. You're going to catch more fish total. So if you go largemouth fishing, just realize that these lakes are anywhere. It's a normal largemouth kind of fisheries, man. Getting five, six, seven, ten 10 bites is, is, is pretty normal. If you catch more than that, if you catch 20, 25 large mouth in a, in a day, you're doing something. But if you catch 20, 25 shoal bass in a day, that's kind of like kind of the norm in the spring. You know what I mean? Like 15, 20, 25 yeah. and up to 40. That's or 50. wild. That's kind of the norm. So there you go. There's that world record. <laughs> it is. So wait, is that yeah, actually it? I thought there wasn't actually a real picture or something. No, there's, there's a couple of, couple of real pictures of that, the world record. But Maybe that's part of what the the debate is. Was it? We got that's that's the whole topic for the Big Bass podcast. Go listen. To yeah, it. listen. Can't they haven't those done. Guys. They haven't done that one yet. So they not on that one, it. but they will. Yeah, they'll. they'll yeah, yeah, and now he's doing the me. Bass After Dark. So go check him out. Any uh any comments we want to hit before we let Daniel go? And uh, appreciate you being here, man, and, and giving us some yeah, really man, good thanks stuff. For having me. Um, yeah, absolutely. The weather, just so everyone, you know, let's look at it. We're 10 days out here. I mean, the weather forecast, at least my app shows up to 10 days out. So well, the weather for while you look up the weather, Drew, I just want to say, I think it's cool where mullet angler, he'll take out friends. So I don't know. I have a, yes. a couple of friends and they don't want anything to do with my obsession. And somehow mullet angler, like he'll take people out fishing that seem to not be into what he's doing. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is cool. Let's go do it. And uh, that's cool, man. I think it's cool that you're uh, in encouraging the people around you to to do what you're doing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I try to, pre yeah, man. I mean, I try to get people out in the sport of fishing, like my little cousins, my buddies. Even if they just come out here and hang out with me, it's just a fun time to get them outside, get them away from like games on the computer, just get them outside and be out in God's creation, man. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's awesome, man. That's, that's, that's in the spirit of the kayak adventure series right there. Um, get people just getting others out there. And, and of course, hopefully they'll, they'll sign up too and be part of the fun. Yeah. So today's 84 in Thomaston, uh, tomorrow's 85, 87 on Friday, 82 on Saturday. Then it drops to 71 for high on Sunday and 70 on Monday and 76 on Tuesday, the 23rd, 24th is 82, 79 on the 25th. So it's kind of going back to, you know, in the seventies starting on like Sunday. Um, so, and then there's some rain in the forecast, just maybe half an inch on Sunday, a little bit more than that, maybe, but nothing major. We're looking good Friday on the 26th, which is a long forecast out. It does say you're going to yeah. have like a little bit more than a quarter of an inch in that area. But man, if it just stays like that and just kind of keeps oh. raining just a little bit, like keep, keep some water going, you know, in the river and don't, right. don't let it get too low and clear yet. And, uh, keep some, you know, I think you guys are going to have a blast. Um, for sure. So we're the 26th. See, that would be, I'd, so I'm probably coming in town on that next, you know, a few days later than that on, on Monday, which would be the, whatever that is 29th, I guess. So I'll be in town the 29th and, um, get on the water a little bit myself and yeah. And then Billy, Jake, you guys will be there. We'll start to figure out how we're going to pull this production off at the theater get all this figured out and yeah i gotta i gotta catch some shoal bass I'm yeah, gonna gotta, yeah man i can't strike out no we can't have a possum kingdom 2.0 <laughs> well i guess no. technically 3.0 yeah absolutely Holy smokes yeah. Wins keeping my butt. <laughs> well good luck man we'll let you get going uh i know you're you're out there and you got a good you know good paddle against the wind here to to do and yeah. appreciate your time and you guys go Thank give uh, the mullet angler a follow. What's the best place they can follow you or where do you, what's your biggest platform? Is it more like you focus on YouTube or Instagram or what is it? Man, my biggest platform right now is YouTube. Instagram I'm working on. You can go follow me on mullet angler, TikTok, Instagram, and well, Facebook's just my name, Daniel Hamilton, but okay. YouTube, mullet angler, Facebook, and Instagram would or my kind of my, my biggest one's YouTube, but Instagram okay. too. So. Cool, man. I love it. Wait, Keep doing yeah, Drew, thanks for letting me come on, man. I Yeah. It's good no to problem, be here. It's good to have come you. on. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, go go send us a picture. We'll see you at Shirley yeah, see you at Shirley Palooza, man. Send us a picture of the big one you catch after you go off live. <laughs> yeah, that's how it happens. You know what's going to happen. <laughs> it is. All right, man. All right, buddy. See ya. Um, man, good show guys. I mean, we, we gave yeah, away great. a lot of juice there. Uh, by the way, yeah. Gramps live tomorrow, tomorrow night. Yeah. 7 30 PM Eastern. So be on with Gramps to talk about it and keep, keep promoting this thing. And I that mean, was the dude, most it, successful that? on the, that was the most successful on the water people we've ever had. Cause we've had a few people yeah. fishing and we actually got to see a fish caught, which yeah. That's true. And we had pretty good audio, actually. You know, for on the water, that's yeah, always Zee's audio was absurd. Like I was yeah. like, how is he getting this so perfectly? It's like thunderstorming behind him, and yet you could still hear him. So well, he clearly <laughs> has the rigging aspect of his kayak just dialed in. <laughs> yeah, but Gunnersville, too, you gotta think about it. You know what's funny is the bass master and MLF and all the pro bass fishing could have something to do with that. I don't know, maybe not, but Gunnersville, like they have so many live, you know, bass fishing events there. And that lake brings in so much like money to the economy of that area. I would not doubt it if they made sure that lake is covered to like the fullest with cell signal for the boaters think, to have signal in case safety. I think the 5G also. rollout yeah. has been like a big deal because you remember how bad it was at Possum Kingdom, right? Yeah. Anyway, polar opposite now. You've got 5G like almost everywhere in the lake. It's crazy. Wow. So. That's cool. I don't know. Well, I, I guess they're stepping up the game. That'll give us a chance to live stream potentially on us, like exactly. the cr the crew. You know, who's going to hopefully cover some of this event? So cover Jeff Little, which another guy we brought up about who's done so much already for this series, and he will be there. Um, filming folks, a drone that can go live. We're going to try to we'll pr try to pull it off if we can, um, and do some live coverage. You know, of course, as long as the angler agrees and isn't like worried about us blowing up. A spot or his area you know and saturday probably won't be a big deal because you know it's saturday and that's the last day but i'd love to go live i mean i think it'd be really cool to just get a gopro or a phone or whatever we have to do and do some live coverage and we'll have to do it um we need to get one of those um remote yep. control boats that with a yeah. camera on it and just have it fall them around <laughs> yeah that'd be cool but um 
Yeah, I think that's about it. I mean, the, you know, just to get signed up, guys, the ACA seminar. Uh, I, I may have shown this later, but I'll show it again, man. Get get signed up. It will help you be safer on the water, learn more about how to catch these fish, um, you know, become a better paddler. And, and that'll, of course, help you, you know, learn how to catch the fish when you understand the paddling skills and where they live and the currents and, you know, all that stuff and all the paddle, proper paddle strokes. Um, and of course, Russ Snyder's, Jeff Little, Dustin Hoy, they all know a thing or two about all of these topics and catching some fish. So go get <clears throat> registered for that. Just email your or PayPal your payment over there to Jeffrey Knowles Little at gmail.com. And uh, you'll be one of the 15 that'll be in that class on Sunday after the Sholy Palooza event at the private lake there too. So uh, Bash You Brunch, don't forget to sign up for Bash You Brunch as well. You can go on the Sholy Palooza page and Click on that. We recommend thirty dollars, but it's optional. I mean, you, you know, again, that just takes care of the uh, bringing in the speakers and your breakfast. And if you only got a dollar or whatever, then change it and put in a dollar. So you don't, don't want to limit it to anyone, like because they don't have the money to do it. We want you guys to come and, and learn and be a part of that. And we know that if we put thirty dollars on there, as suggested, somebody's you know who's you know been blessed with you know a little bit more income in this this period of their life or whatever might might give a hundred, might give fifty. And that's going to make up for those who may not have as much at this moment that might give one or two or whatever, two bucks, five bucks. So I'm excited guys. What, man, we got one more, a couple more lives. We're going to do live Wednesday of the, the week of the event. We'll do a live and it will be on with Amanda Brandon. And I'm going to try to get Dwayne on from Tourney X as well. And we'll go over some of the sort of the tournament director kind of rule stuff there. And she'll be at the event as well. And then uh, next week, uh, we should probably get maybe a guest, but really, really go over this GoPro footage, how to transfer it, what we're what we expect from you guys, and and what we need, so that everyone can kind of continue to learn the flow of the Kayak Adventure series and how we can make it fun for everybody. So yep. it should be should be a good one. So we'll. Uh, All right, everyone. Yep. I think we got it. We hear I hear yeah. jungle music, so we must be done. Today's episode, it was a great one. If you're live now and you missed out the beginning, go back, start it over, watch everything, and uh, have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next Wednesday at 11 a.m. See you guys.